Welcome to Circuit Secrets. In today's video, I will show you how to install Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition and get set up to start developing desktop apps to communicate with microcontroller projects. <laughs> In the last video, I worked with ChatGPT revising and refining code through several stages to create a microcontroller program. That program allows information the microcontroller receives through the serial port to be converted into Morse code, then flashed by the built-in LED on the microcontroller. In this video, I will show you how to install and set up Visual Studio and some of the basics of app development for Windows. In the next video, I will use ChatGPT to help develop a Windows application that will connect to the last project through the serial port that will send messages that the microcontroller board will convert into Morse code. Step 1. Download the Visual Studio Community IDE installer. When selecting the download options, select .NET Desktop Development and Universal Windows Platform Development. I also selected Windows Development with C++ in case I want to use it in the future. Once you have selected the packages, click the Install button. Visual Studio should now begin the long, slow task of installation. After installation, the installer will display a button which allows you to launch Visual Studio 2022. Click the button to launch Visual Studio. The first run will take some time as Visual Studio is configured. Eventually, you will be presented with a window that asks you to create a new account, sign in, or select Skip This for now. You are then prompted to choose a theme for Visual Studio. I selected the traditional blue theme, then click the Start Visual Studio button. Again, there will be a fairly long delay as Visual Studio is further configured. Eventually, you will be presented with a menu asking if you want to clone repository, open a project, open a local folder, or create a new project. Select Create a New Project. Another menu will appear that asks what kind of project you wish to create. There is a language pull-down menu. Use it to select C Sharp. Select Windows Forms App.NET Windows Desktop. Next, name the project. Select the option to save the solution and project in the same directory and then select Create. And now Visual Studio should display an empty Windows application. At this point, we can start customizing the application with visual elements and developing the user interface. The toolbox on the left is where you find controls to add to the application. If there is no slide out tab for the toolbox, click on the view menu and click toolbox to make it visible. On the right side is the solution explorer. This lists all the components in the application. Below the solution explorer is the properties window. If the properties window is not visible, press the F4 button to make it visible. This is where you can configure things like the properties and behaviors of controls. The very bottom of the screen has the task list, error list, and output. This is a lot like the output window in the Arduino IDE. The output helps with debugging and seeing how the application compilation goes. Clicking on the form for the application and then pressing F7 will pull up the code window for the application. This is where the actual source code for your application resides. The tabs above the code window allow you to switch between the design tab and the code tab. If you click the start button, the application will compile and run with debug information. Now that you have an empty application that runs and a basic understanding of the layout of Visual Studio, you are ready to start fleshing out your application. Admittedly, I have not done much Windows programming since the old days when Visual C++ and Visual Basic with VB runtimes were the standard. That being said, the approach to building Windows applications is not that much different with Visual Studio 2022 and C Sharp. App creation is broken down into two parts, the design portion and the coding portion. The design portion is what we used to call a WYSIWYG, or what you see is what you get design interface. You just drag elements onto the form to flesh out what the application looks like. These elements can be buttons, text boxes, images, or any other visual and or interactive component. Once they are placed on the form or application, their properties can be set or adjusted in the properties window. These properties vary depending on the element and range from the text displayed on a button to appearances and visibility. There are enough element properties and variations an entire video could be dedicated to exploring them. Let me know in the comments if you want me to create such a video or if you are content exploring those features on your own. The second part of application design is the actual code that makes the application work. The most important thing to consider about basic Windows application programming is that most of the work is event driven. Events in Windows programs can be anything from a form loading to a button being clicked and anything in between. 
This has been the same since at least Windows 3.1. Back then, the programmer had to handle all of the handles or pointers for references to objects like buttons and event handlers for each app and object, but Visual Studio was able to automate most of those coding requirements. When in design mode, you can double-click on an element and Visual Studio will generate an empty event handler and automatically open the source code. Eventually, we will be using ChatGPT to help with coding our app. But first, we need a little knowledge to be able to understand what to do with the generated code, how to use and debug it. I'm going to show you how to code a simple Hello World equivalent of a Visual Studio c .NET Windows form application. If you followed the previous procedures for setup and starting a project, you have an empty form open in Visual Studio and all the required toolbars ready to use. In the Tools box on the left side, find the Label element and drag it to the form. With the label selected, go to the Properties menu on the lower right side of the screen. Make note of the label's auto-generated name under Design in the Properties menu. It is Label 1. Next, move up to Font and expand that menu. Now you can size the label and set things like the font type. Notice there is a property called Text. This property determines what text is displayed on the label. We can change it in the Properties window to say, Click the button. Now we drag a button from the Tools menu on the left side to the form and place it anywhere you want. I put it under the label. I double-click the button, and the coding window pops up with an empty handler for dealing with the click event of the button. In the handler, I tell it the table name, and as I start typing, code hints start popping up to help. I type label1.text equals quotation mark hello world quotation mark and close the line of code with a semicolon. Now I click the run and debug button, and after a while the application is running. The application says, click the button, and when I do, the application says, hello world. I close the application by clicking on the X for exit, and it ends without error. If you are following along, congratulations, you've just built your first Windows application. In the next video, I will use ChatGPT to build a Windows application that will communicate with a microcontroller. If you enjoyed this content, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching.